This is Joseph Coco on behalf of Natto Soups. Keep on trucking, the art process blog. Uh, if you could introduce yourself, please, Rachel. Sure. My name is Rachel Ann Millar. I am at Ape currently, and this is my sub. Right. We're at Ape 2014. Uh, and uh, can you tell me a little bit about what brought you to this convention? I take it this isn't your first year here? No. I've actually been coming to Ape since, what was it, 2008? 2008 was our first show, and Ruth and I did a table together like we're doing now. So, um, what's been your experience at APE? Uh, we, this is our first West Coast convention, actually. So, how has it kind of changed over the years, and um, how do you how do you find it caters to uh, your sort of artwork, the more shoujo uh, style that has a, a bit of anime influence? Well, I think that it makes a big difference when you have shows that do a lot of self-publishing because you get a good mix of different artists. I'm able to come here and sell things next to people who do strictly horror or strictly video game art. get a lot of just like uh, walking by traffic or it's just people who heard that there's something going on in this area and they decide to check it out? The older convention area, you kind of had to know. Like here, yeah. I expect a lot more walkthrough. I think a lot of people will come by that are just here for the, for the day. Um, but there was always a lot of traffic. You know, it was, uh, it was a convention that was born in the Bay Area, so the people that know about it really care about it. Okay, and can you tell me a little bit about your artwork? Uh, where how long have you been um, producing art? I've been drawing since I was seven, so I'm coming up on a lot of years doing that. I'm 28 now. I think I'm 21 years. I don't know. Math is hard. <laughs> I'm an artist, not a mathematician. <laughs> um, I like doing realistic art. I, I just started really getting back into it and doing florals and trying to mimic watercolor because I'm garbage at it. So the What Did You Call Me zine is like my first step into that world again. I use Copic markers because they're alcohol based and they bleed really well together with the blender so yeah. it makes it look like watercolor which is good enough for me. <laughs> And um, do you find that, that people at Ape respond uh, well to your style and um, you, the mediums you're choosing, that sort of thing, like the, the Copic base? I think so. It's about truer color. Uh, Ruth and I, when we work on things together, which a lot of our prints are, um, we do digital because that way we can both color it and then she will do the actual color saturation. She went to school for fine art, has a better understanding okay. of color right. that I don't have. I mean, I, I mean I'm not garbage at it, but <laughs> she, she actually knows. You know, a bit more theory. color theory. It makes a difference. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and um, uh, you've been coming to Ape for a little while now. Uh, are you tabling with Ruth as part of like a strategy, or are you just more comfortable that way, or is it more a monetary thing? Because I, I imagine by this point you you would feel comfortable enough to get your own table at Ape. You know. <laughs> Ape okay. is our most expensive convention. Yeah. Uh, Ruth and I cater to each other as far as knowing each other's work and selling together. We also um, were the co-founders of Paper Links Press, which is our other project, which is a blog we do with uh, three other artists and writers. I guess we're both because we all blog and draw, whatever. Yeah. Um, but Ruth and I have been friends since 2000. Like We've been friends for a very long time. And I lived with her for eight years, and not many people can live with their best friend. So yeah. I can live with her for eight years. I can table you can with her table for, for a, a weekend, days, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and not kill each other. Okay. We, we have good, um, we have good uh, table dynamics. Manners. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So you have you found have you found that you've branded yourself together, and you're kind of operating like as an extension of the blog, or it's just I just can't get rid of her. I can't. <laughs> <she won't leave laughs> <me alone. laughs> no. 
not trying to say you shouldn't be tabling with people. I'm just no, trying to give people an idea of our, the expectations of the convention, essentially. Our art goes really well together. Like, you panned around this side of the table. Like, the Bioshock print is not even mine. That's hers. Our work works so well together that we're able to table together fluidly, you know, and it's really, it's important. Okay. And, um... Types of conventions do you do? I know we talked about anime conventions a little bit, and um, how it's a, a little bit harder to find uh, your audience uh, in such a, a, a big city. We're we're in San Francisco. Um, where do you find you connect the most with with your fans? What type of shows? I think that I have the most fun talking to people at Ape normally. However, we did anime for the first time in May of this year, and I found that I was expecting really uncomfortable. And what I got were really amazing fans who really cared that we had work that wasn't just anime, which was yeah. really awesome, and I was surprised. Your your original work? Yeah, like yeah, I was really awesome. impressed by that, you know. And of course, I do a lot of fan art for shows like that because you have to cater to the audience that you're there for. Yeah. But it turned out that they were just wonderful and wanted to know more about my stuff, and some of them found me online and purchased stuff later, and it was nice. Um, we do other stuff like SF Zine Fest, and we do um, we're gonna do EBAP. That. And can you tell me a little bit more about your blog that you'd mentioned earlier? Oh, Paper Lakes, yeah. yeah. Paper Lakes Press was originally started to be like um, a month comic deal. So it was... <laughs> it's cool shirt. Um, we originally were doing like, we'd give people to contribute, we'd have a bunch of people contributing, and it would be like, do a five page comic in a month. And that turned out to be too difficult. We all are adults with lives and jobs. So instead, five of us took over. So it's Rena Nunez. Kayla Trail, Amy Corson, myself, and Drew Halloran, and paperleaks.org is the actual site, and we each have a day. I do Mondays, and then Brina does Tuesdays, Kayla Wednesdays, Amy Thursdays, and Ruth ends the week on Fridays. Okay. And we so it's about whatever. Constant, uh, just art process things, or sometimes fandom, or... It's, it's a like, lot of... Is it more catering towards artists or fans? I think it's catering towards both. I like to talk about my art process a lot of the time okay. or things that are feminist in nature like I, my favorite post is the one I did about girl farts because why should there be a double standard about farts that's ridiculous I mean we're human beings we're animals yeah. so that's a lot of the um, topics I choose it's either educational or talking about my style or about Just trying you know, to change like the that. comic scene for the better basically definitely and talking about that and Ruth does a lot of interesting more like you know including current events in, in her life and the kind of things she goes through as a woman and as a woman artist which is interesting and my friend uh, Brita Nunez is, a, is really into doing um, like Hispanic uh, she's into the Hispanic comic scene you know she herself is, um, is what is she uh, El, El Salvadorian and Guatemala thank you she's going to be mad if she sees that song <laughs> but it's cool because it gives it gives a flavor <laughs> to our comics like yeah. I'm half Mexican but I don't write about that as much you know right it I doesn't necessarily affect the, it, it the content of your work exactly you okay. know I mean she has you know she visits her you know her country's of origin often she cares about you know the knowledge and about you know the importance of her issues that she writes about and you have to read her blog to really understand it okay. like I'm just so I like to <laughs> teach kids about art I like to talk about farts like that's that's not my scene <laughs> Okay, and where could we find your work online? My work can be found at rachelannmillard.com. Let me see, where's my... Business <laughs> card? Here, I got... <laughs> yeah. It's upside down. There you go. That's me. You can also just hashtag that, or um, it's that on Instagram, too. I post a lot of art on Instagram. Okay, and did you have any advice for someone who's considering coming to Ape for the first time? To be a table? An artist, yes. Um, uh, behind the table. Try, try not to spend too much money on the process of making your stuff, because you want things to be a viable price. Okay. If you go too high and there's not enough content, people will not buy it for the price that you want. And the most important thing about tabling, I feel like, is the profits after breaking even. This is an expensive convention. Yeah. Our table is $150. Can I butt in? I sure. think that's really interesting because at Mocha Fest, they claim it's not at all about making money, which I think is bull. Like, I think you can't do this for a living if you're not making money. That's 
yeah. ridiculous. But like it's it's about meeting the other artists, which is great. That's wonderful. It's nice. When do I have time to do that? When I'm changing? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and it's not like a lot of them can leave their tables either. So you do after parties, but if you're not an after party person, you're not going to meet anybody. So. Um, Mocha I Fest really is masquerading as being a communal thing a instead small of indie a indie con instead of a massive production. Um, yeah. So I really appreciate your honesty. Oh, I think oh the God. important thing oh, to do yeah. also oh spectate. She's the best. Convention before you go. Come prepared with a postcard or a freebie postcard with your name and you know your stuff on it, yeah. your information or business cards. Go and talk to other artists. Find out how they do. Watch what sells. Okay. Watch the people buy. It. That's yes. another difference with the East Coast. Because artists can be shady about their uh, <laughs> their bottom line. They they can lie or they'll say a very generic. Oh, it's good, and everybody's it's good is different. Like for me, if I don't make seven hundred, I don't return back. I have only made that kind of money once, <laughs> but I do a lot of it. And I do yeah. learn a lot of the money's at. It is because that's where the girls who want this style are, especially in these coasts. And ninety percent. My sales are $5 sketches, yeah. which it like wrecks my hands. So through. I come yeah. home dead. Uh, yeah, anime conventions, if you do that, commissions. I'm actually working on a drawing someone gave me. It's an angel themed art book, and he's like, How much for your sketches? It's like 10 bucks there for a decent, you know, washed and black and white drawing. Yeah. You can make good money commissioning, but then you lose contact with the people that are coming to your table. That's one of my problems. If you're tabling by yourself, don't do that. Yeah, you have to engage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You cannot ignore your customers. I have 10 years of retail experience under my belt. Do not ignore your customers because they will remember. It's you were that artist was like, how does it work? Okay. Pretty big on horror in this table. You know, but like, I hate that person. That's why I bring an assistant because I get so slogged down. But last con, the noise level was so high, she zoned out. And instead of leaving the table and letting me take over, she just sat there and like vegged out. So I was looking for excuses to send her away because at least then I could handle my drawing and handle my audience instead of handle my drawing, handle her malaise and handle my audience. But I totally agree with you. And it's such a killer for the artist who loves people, loves interaction, to be stuck with $5 commission from people who, let's be frank, do not give a crap about me, will not follow up ever. They want that $5 whatever. Well, and that's fine. The way I deal with the $5 thing is if it's a law convention like Phantom, Thank you, Rachel. I hope you have a good ape.